All right, so. Let me get my camera. And the noise is not standing. All right, that's good. <laughs> All right, so one of the things that we're looking for in our data collection or our, our planning is um, to talk about in this particular day is to talk about some of the things, how are things going, and what is it that we need to work on, as well as um, things that you're doing in class to actually measure with the kids. The very first thing at the beginning of the year, we made a big, big issue about the big idea. Um, understanding what is the big idea from a curriculum standpoint, and then what is it that we can do. How, um, how is, and how does that look in the class? How is that process going? And then kind of tell me the goods with it, the bads, what are the strengths and weaknesses, um, and kind of go from there. It is going well. Um, I like the fact that we have a clear understanding in the beginning, mm -hmm. in the middle of the week, of what the students are going to do and should do, you know, at the end of either that week or that paper that, or, you know, or that curriculum. Okay. Um, the downfall is being able to just keep that updated on the wall. Like, we're able to do the I can statement, the, you know, the goals, but we are having a little trouble with keeping up with doing the set, success criteria and the goals. What do you, what the success criteria, what is it that you're doing with the, how do you do it and what is it, where's the challenge come in with your population, mm -hmm. specifically your class? What is that challenge for? Um, I mean, my only challenge is I guess I can put it on lesson plans and I can tell the students and they can tell me what to do. Right. But me finding the time to put it up all on the wall. Right, right, like I okay. I can put the I can statement up, so it's just finding the time to put the success criteria, but that's it. Okay. Other than that, yeah. Okay. It's the success criteria. I know at one point with kindergarten, it was always that thing of, um, do they understand what it is and so forth? Do, do your children understand yeah. what success criteria? Can yeah. you give me examples of what, the, so, what it is? So, um, whenever I start my daily, like my routine, my whole group, I say, okay, the success criteria is what we're going to do at the end of this mini lesson. Mm -hmm. So I'll say, let's do the I can statement first. So there was a goal. And then I'll say, okay, repeat after me. Students will, and then they'll say students will, and then we'll go forward like that. So once they break off into their centers, I come around to make sure they understand what that success criteria is. Because I kind of, like today, we did tens and ones right here. I went around to them when they finished, and even before, while they were working, I said, tell me what you are doing. Tell me at the end of this, what are you going to do? Correct. And they said, we are adding tens and ones. And I said, how do you know that? And they said, because. Um, in a team number, you have one group of ten and some ones. So I said, so at the end of this, what what's the final product? You know, what do you have? And they said, one of them looked at me and said, well, a team number. And I said, yeah, you have a team number, but how did you break it down? Then they said it again, tens and ones. Now, of course, that was my higher group. Right. With my right, babies, right. Um, you know, with my babies, it's just as simple as I was having them to write the team numbers in order. Right. So once they finished, I came around, I said, what was our goal today? Okay. What did you have to do? And they say, oh, write my team numbers. I said, there you go. Okay. So how do you break up? What 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 are you using or how did you determine the groups? Um, a little bit of math. Okay. But most, the what I'm using is just observation, anecdotal records, like what I'm seeing every day. Because I've noticed some of the children that, have, that scored high on the math, I think some of them had a good guess in saying that, and say that. Mm -hmm. um, and then some of them are right where they're supposed to be. But a lot of the students that maybe scored higher or scored higher than I assume, they're not there. Okay. They're not there. So I said, I want a clear winter score to see where they are. Because that fall, some of them were just clicking, you know, right, 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 right. So I said, winter will actually show me where they are. Okay. So a lot of what we use is just anecdotal notes and checklists and juices, honestly. So when you do anecdotal notes, mm -hmm. if, with your anecdotal notes, is it something that's like, okay, this is just custom to me, I'm the only person that sees it, or is it no, something that No, it's does it as well. Okay. She'll write down, like if I'm in whole group, and say we did nouns and verbs today, uh -huh. she wrote down all the students who were able to give me a, you know, a person, place, or thing, or all the students who were able to show me what a verb is, right. and, and do the action. So yeah, so Ms. Hammond sees it as well. Okay. I'm trying to remember what grade it was. I went in and they were talking about person, place, and thing. It may have been a fourth grade. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, they're spiraling. No, it's third grade. They were spiraling. They will spiral. Is there a plan, like, if they don't get it, you just stay there? How does that look, and what are um, you getting? If I notice that they're still having trouble on it, even if, because I noticed what I paced by, is child. 
and it leaves out a lot of stuff. So, like, for example, next week, the patient got focused just on reading and writing. There's no point. None. And not at all in this point. So I told them, I said, guys, we still have to drill these kids with science. These keywords, you know, segmenting, all of that. So if I see my students still have a weakness, regardless of what the patient guy says, I'm going to add these. Because I always remember, Ms. Meyer said, you can never have, you can never, what she say? You can never take away from it, but you can add to it. So I remember Ms. Meyer always saying, it's home, don't stress. If it's not there, add it in. So I always remember Ms. Meyer saying that. So what do you do in the event, like, okay, if you got, how does growing readers tie in all that? Because I do know, and I, and if I'm, if I'm being 200% transparent, that was the piece that helped me to understand it was really a lot of stuff that you all were doing. Show me, in those cases, how does growing readers tie into that mm -hmm. particular part? Um, well, we don't start with that until January. Okay. Right now we're modeling, showing them how to sit properly, showing them how to use the book, how to turn it from left to right, how not to tear and write in the book. Once we get there, we start with our independent reading, which is between the subjects. Uh, we never actually had a book in the subject, but this year we do. So in January, we're going to start with that, just giving them, um, you know, a level A, level B. Rob and I, um, and I haven't really had a chance to sit down and ask the students, I am going to ask her, but I know Ms. Rob and I kind of already got in our minds who reads on A, B, and C, just by little pieces that we've been doing here and there. So our next goal is to try to start from running records. Because I'm gonna be honest, like, you know, with the amount of kids we have, we really have to sit down and get a running record on each child. Right. But just by sight word fluency, you know who can read what. The issue with our babies are they can fluently read, but they're not comprehending. Correct. So they're not ready to go to that next level. Correct. So how do you check if they okay, mm -hmm. you, you you said that. So in many ways, that's a success criteria because the very first thing that we think is, okay, they can read, but the fact of the matter is they're not actually comprehending. Mm -hmm. How do you determine that success, that criteria, the, the success of that? Mm -hmm. How do you determine that they they don't actually know yeah. or they're not comprehending? So with growing readers, we have four questions that we ask them. We ask them how. How did this story happen? Who was in the story? Where were they? If they can't answer those four things, growing readers told us to not go them up. So it's four questions. Um, who was in the story? Mm -hmm. Where was the setting? Mm -hmm. Tell me what happened. If they can't answer all four of those, they're not ready to go up to the next book. So Even if they can fluently read. If they can't answer those four questions, we don't need to know. So what's your next step after that? If you Okay, what is the step for if they do get it, mm -hmm. and then what is the step if they don't get it? If they do get it, they move on to the next um, book up. If they don't, in my guided reading, I focus on nothing but comprehension. And I have most of my, I only have really one group that I'm able to do fluency and all that. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. Um, my next question is, last year, I think all of us had different experiences with the overall success, give me one second. Mm -hmm. All of us had different experiences with the overall, hey. Yes, they had to talk about car. Okay. Okay. All right. Bye. Um, last year we lost a lot. We know that I don't want to call it the term learning loss because we began to recognize that it's not necessarily learning loss, but it was just some deficits that they didn't or some skills that they didn't receive. Where do you see the biggest challenges may first grade may be encountering right now? Because I heard you say, when I heard you say we are teaching them, and I never, I actually never knew this. How to flip the book from left, uh, from right to left, how to flip it like that. And think about that because in many cultures, they don't read the same direction. So the, the books go a different way. Not to mention it's just kindergarten, first grade. You gotta understand kindergarten that they're understanding, they're learning how to even hold a book and what a book means. So what do you do in that situation? Or what do you feel the biggest deficits that first grade may have actually encountered? And then how is it that we probably, what is it that needs to be done? Is there a bridge of stuff that we could do or should do? Hmm. First grade would be, in my opinion, it's the sight word mm -hmm. And that's what stops them. Because the babies can decode. They can decode that, cat, this, all. But when it's words that they can't decode, they're struggling. So, and the thing is, I'm trying to get my parents at home involved, make flashcards, you know, give them some, some um, shading paper. 
put it on the table. You know, just eat Play-Doh. I told them go to the dollar store, get a pack of Play-Doh. Let them form the words with it because the sight words are with their shoulders. And I even noticed Miss Home Cat, some of her students out with Miss Davis the other day going through the sight words. And I told Miss Davis, I said, the issue is they're lacking the sight words fluid. And she said, yeah. She said, that's why we have them out here. I said, yeah. I said, that's what they do. They go in the first grade and they don't like to have the sight word fluid to help them through. So they can hold the words, but they're not being able to, you know, spit out those words as soon as they see them. Words that they can't decode, you know? Right. So it's the sight words that struggle on top of the comprehension. So when you go and share out, because that's one of the things that we've been working on in our building is the the um, culture and climate, making sure that we mm -hmm. teach parents how to be engaged and involved. Because in many cases, let's, let's be real, there's some, we have a lot of families, if, if you're talking about our Esau families, mm -hmm. they can't, mm -hmm. they really, really can't help because they don't even know what the language is and what you're saying. And then we we have some families who, they go to school so that you don't bother me during the day. <laughs> that, that's just real. So how do we actually, what are you all doing as a grade level to build that relationship because I think we're doing a pretty good job because what I want, the one thing, and it's just as simple as being in the car ride line, my baby told me they learned this today, my baby did this, so what are you doing to help engage the parents? Um, they get a weekly newsletter. Good. The weekly newsletter has all the sight words for that week and it has suggested activities to help them to build the Um, I can see exactly who reads it and who's doing it and I also do outside to make sure they're doing it. I'll say, your homework for today, I want you to write all of your sight words on a note card and take a picture and upload it and send it to me. And I usually have... How are they sending it to? To Dojo. I usually doesn't. have about half that does it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the other half that doesn't do it? Mm -hmm. What do you do with those? I'll call. I'll be honest. I'll call. Okay. And I'll say, hey, I really need you to please make sure that because we want the children to be able to read. And I do, said, do you get decent responses mm -hmm. back from those? Some of them will say, you're tall, I'm sorry, I'm just and I tell them, no rush, do it on the weekend. I said, you know, I get it. I said, I'm a working mom. So I said, I get it. You know, I said, it's things I have to help my daughter with on the weekend because I'm tired, you know. So I told him, I said, don't feel like you don't, you know, you don't have the time to get it done. Because I had one thing I said, Miss Paul, I walked in, she had like 100 assignments. And I said, it's okay. I said, that's about 100 assignments that homework they had at the beginning. I said, but take your time. Do two or three every, you know, Saturday. Or you know Sunday, do one. And she said, "Really? I thought I had to do all of them." I'm like, no. Right, right. <laughs> she said, "How long you have an F?" I said, "She won't be great." I said, "She's not." So when they bring up that whole thing about getting an F, what do you do with that? Do mm -hmm. you just help them understand it's not about the F? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so once again, that goes into that part of developing a a parent because what we're trying to do, and I've shared this, um, I actually talked about this quite often in our um, region meetings, I always talk about the fact that we, we do is we develop from the bottom and we're going up. And what we've found is that the students that have gone all the way through our program are the ones that we're having the most success with. They actually understand more and better of what it is that we're doing as a whole. So we don't run into those challenges as they get up in the upper grade. So I, I'm sharing this with you so that you understand the context of where I'm coming from. We did an actual, we pulled up all of our data and mapped and that we were able to see that the children that were in the, the higher percentiles, the proficient and the distinguished, overwhelmingly had been in the building for over two, sometimes in, in, in third grade, three years. So what is the very first thing that we, what is the success criteria for the parents and the families? What do you do in order to encourage them to stay in one place or to get them engaged? Are there any things that you do or can you think of anything? Um, to keep them in the building, just through my class dojo, like I said, with weekly updates. And, and explain how class dojo works yeah, in, yeah. in your classroom. So, you um, you know, all the kids are on, the parents are connected. When they log into class dojo on the class story, they can see every anything that I post to them. Any messages, any sight words, anything math related, anything that I post to them, they can see it. When they click up at the top, they can switch from parent to student. When they switch over to the student, that's when they can get more involved with it. As simple as I upload a worksheet, the students can fill it out. Or I give an activity on a piece of paper, draw me this, do X, Y, and Z, take a picture and upload it. So um, I'm constantly in communication with them, whether it's through the student account or the parent account. And all of them, even my EOs, they know how to switch out. 
they, they all know how to switch out now to see the student view and to see the parent view. So, in my, I had a finger yesterday, um, you know, she, she sent me a message, um, you know, about sending things to student view. So when she didn't get the call, she said, well, the parent said she wanted to know if you were okay because she sent you a message and you didn't respond back. And she said, and when she just started laughing, she said, I thought, well, she's teaching right now. But I said that to say, they know when they send me a message, I'm on my watch or I'm, like, I'm going to respond back. I'm going to constantly communicate. Right. So that is my biggest thing in class. I try and try to get my parents to sign up for that. I tell them that's the secret they reach me. So the parent asked me, she was everything okay with me because I didn't respond back. Right. And she said, yeah, she's teaching. That's, you know, that's probably why she didn't respond back. But, you know, even though I know it was something urgent and the parent needed me, I was happy to know that you know, he was concerned, like, is everything okay? I sent teacher a message, and the teacher didn't respond back. You know, right. She usually responds back. So, um, you know, it's just that constant communication with them. It's a private message they can send me. It's a class story. I even have some parents who interact with each other on the class story, like social media. Right. Like, if, you know, if I say, um, you know, I need some supplies, or can you guys listen, or, you know, make sure you have this for this project. I'll have parents that will message under there, oh, I saw this at this store. Or, oh, I saw this at this book. So I encourage, I try to get all of them to sign Which in turn is that whole thing that we've been shooting for at the school that we're developing, a community-based yeah. school where they're beginning to actually communicate with one another as well. Awesome, awesome, mm -hmm. awesome. Quick question from that standpoint. I'm going to think in that, now I know we've kind of pushed Parent Portal. Mm -hmm. um, and Parent Portal, it, it has its benefits, but it's, do you see a situation where your parents may not be engaged with Parent Portal yeah. because they're actually locked into Class Dojo, mm -hmm. okay? And that's, and, and, and you know, even hearing what you, how you explained, I know that we use Class Dojo quite a bit, but to the magnitude of what you're doing, I can see where Class do where Parent Portal actually takes a second case because now they're looking at it like, this is where I'm looking for all the information. Mm -hmm. All right, and even with the school's website or using the, the um, thing. So in many cases, some of those of you who are very proficient in this, actually, that's the risk that you run. Um, so it is what it is at that point. We'll determine if it, how much it impacts on the long run. But the reality of it is that's one of the reasons that sometimes we don't have necessarily all the things. And I, I do now, I know at one point there was a point uh, thing in there where it actually translated for the parents, mm -hmm. our Esau parents. Is it a vocal translation or do they have to be they a have read? To be. Okay, okay. So that, that was, that's another factor in there. If they can't read, it's still a little bit of a deficit because um, then there's the reality that, that they possibly can't read. It'd be the same difference of a person over here just having difficulty reading um, regular English. So, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so the success criteria, I'm going to go back to the success mm -hmm. criteria. What other methods of success criteria are you using in the class other than the observations, um, some of the work they're doing, and then once you get that information, how do you differentiate your classroom? So, um, like I said, I'm using checklists, um, summary records, summary, and photo notes on my respective tickets. Um, just give a thumbs up, thumbs down, different things like that. Once I have all of those, then I start to put them in groups. I'll be honest, because um, that to me, for kindergarten in the beginning, is not an educational word. Good. Because a lot of those students are just why? click, 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 click. Say, say it, why? Yeah, why? the students are just clicking through. Right. So I really do not know what they know coming through my classroom board in September because of the text. So even when I looked at their scores, I said to myself, I have the data from August, and it's not matching up with what their math scores are. Some were higher in my class, some were lower. So I wait until the winter when they understand how to use the computer, how to guide through math. Because even in the beginning, I have on my big screen, there's a math pretext that they can take. And I show them, but the babies are not understanding what I mean by click and drag. So I have to show them. So now that I'm showing them how to click and drag through the guys, through, you know, different things, I said, now when we take the math test again, you all are gonna know what it means to click or drag. Some of them started crying, some of them became frustrated and said, nope, click, 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 because they didn't understand how to take the test. So I don't really use math solely in the beginning for kindergarten. Good. If it was an upper grade, good. 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 but I use 
what I see in my data that I have to determine where these things are, even for GQ, even for GQ, because like I said, math in the beginning. So how do, okay, here's the trick question or the hard question in there. You know all that, Cameron knows all that. Y'all are in the room every day. Hypothetically speaking, we have to do another change like we did. Mm -hmm. How would the next teacher know exactly what you've done? Have you? We have folders. Good. Each panel has their own folder. Good, good. Mm -hmm. And that's also same information that can be passed on to the next grade level and parents, correct? Mm -hmm. um, because at that point, they'll be able to see. So you don't really have to have that conversation if my baby didn't learn or mm -hmm. all where they didn't mm -hmm. learn because they're seeing it they're day seeing in and day out. And I even, I even just with the folders I keep in class, if I see a baby struggling with something in class, I'll sit and put a little smiley face at the top and I'll say, please help me complete at home and finish. And they do. Okay. They help me with it at home and, and the kids, I did it. Teach me. I did my homework. <laughs> but I love it because they're so excited. Even though they know, you know, uh oh, we have some mixed up, but we don't have enough time to fix it. So they go home, fix it, and then we'll talk about it at home. And so they're so anxious to show me, I did it, I finished it at home. So. So how do you, okay, here's one. It sounds like that's a celebratory mm -hmm. opportunity. How do y'all celebrate? Oh, we have a party every Friday. Every Friday, whether it's, you know, chips or maybe, you know, cookies or just whatever. You know, we are celebrating. Then it's just little celebrations. I have a um, little bar in my class that's a compliment bar. So whether we're walking down the hallway, if somebody said they're looking good or they did something good in the cafeteria, I come back to the room and I put a red chip into the compliment bar. And at the end of the week, we count and see how many compliments we have. Um, regardless of how many we have or not, we still so you know, celebrate. So but if we have 10 or more compliments, oh, we have a really big party. Pizza party, nacho party, you know, a really big party. Last week, I forgot the party I needed. I forgot. So when we were leaving, the student said, I'm in town. I come put the jar in school. And we didn't have our party today. <laughs> and Miss Hammond said, Well, I think Miss Hall knows that, guys. And she's going to get the party soon. <laughs> but they were like, um, I got put the jar in school. And we didn't have the party. I said, You know what? Miss Hall said, We're going to have this next time, okay? And they said, Okay. But I'm excited that they, and they tell each other, don't do that, because if you do that, we're not going to be able to have our party. So, so it becomes a little bit more, you're not doing the, the, the it, it, it all of it's a part of that overall splash PBIS thing mm -hmm. that you've been doing with the, old, with the celebrations, positive behavior and influences. That's what it is that we're doing. So for, as a result, never, I, I, I don't even recall, I'm honestly, I don't remember you ever having a a write-up or a referral mm -hmm. or someone coming up even when the, the little fella cut the little girl's hair it was even from that standpoint I think all parties were mm -hmm. pretty calm overall from the whole standpoint because I think most of them understand it really was not a playing thing it's just something that happened mm -hmm. um, because it was it was a really easy conversation I, I was one of the little girl, I, I really was a little worried because some people are very sensitive mm -hmm. about that, but they were like, it's okay, I understand. Um, anything else that you can think of, what are the things that we need to do with the planning or things that we might I need to do different? I just wish that somehow we can have some vertical things. Okay. A long time ago, we used to have it. When I was in pre-K, pre-K used to plan sometimes with kindergarten, whether it was one time or one. And then we used to have the vertical things. Like so I wish we could sit each one the first grade, you know? To kind of see, okay, help us. What are the deficits that? What what are we? What do you guys want us to work on? Okay. Yeah. We can work on that. I think mm -hmm. that's something because that that falls in alignment of what we keep saying with the data. We have to start making it go up and down. We're doing a pretty good job, job across the grade level, mm -hmm. but if we're really, really expanding what we're doing, we have to look at it from that vertical concept and start recognizing, okay, what are the next steps? And I think we have all the tools because mm -hmm. the good thing with the curriculum. As I stated earlier, it spirals. I can't remember, it, it, it was second or third grade that I was in a class and they were talking about the different things with, of, of, of now. Mm -hmm. So it had to have been second grade because third grade, that would have been the focus of it. But it was, it was first grade. Mm -hmm. It was first grade. It was, it was actually first grade because I remember the little boy telling me and I was throwing out different things to him and he said, it's a person, that's mm -hmm. a noun. And it's, it's and um, so it, it goes right along with the same thing that you just said. How do we actually vertically align and put ourselves in the um, position that we're actually speaking to person to person? 
it was actually Miss Middlebrook's class, and there was a fella in there, and he's one that actually has had some challenges, but he was able to go in there and clearly, um, when I asked him, what do you learn, what is, what's the learning target? He said, I'm learning about nouns. Nouns, and I said, well, what is a noun? He said, it's a person, place, or thing. So if I call out something, is, if I run, is that a noun? He said, no, because it's not a person, place, or thing. And I said, okay, so you, you, you know, so we got the long story story short. He was very clear with it because he was, he kept on saying it over and over and over. And this was a child that struggled. I, I can remember him really, really struggling. So the work that you guys are doing is excellent. Um, thank you for everything that you're doing. Um, any, any other questions other than that vertical? Awesome, awesome. All right, that was, that was all. But all right, well, we got it.